Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So I've been watching a lot of YouTube in my weeks off from school and I've noticed a lot of people putting out the everything I've knit in 2022 videos. So I thought I would jump on the bandwagon. Uh, I started knitting in 2022. I started sort of mid January, I think January 17th is when I cast on my first sweater and pretty much I have not stopped ever since then. So this year I managed to make 28 sweaters, um, which you can see behind me here. One of them I frogged because I didn't like it. Uh, I've made three pairs of socks, three hats, and two stuffed animals. So this is going to be a long video. Uh, they're not going to be in chronological order. They're just going to be probably in color order. I'm just going to pick up a pile and show you what I'm doing. Um, what I'm wearing now is my most recent finished object. Um, so this is just a self-tracked raglan style sweater using the Malabrigo Rios yarn in the color Hojas because I really wanted something to sort of like show off all of those fancy fun peacocky colors and I'm really happy how it turned out. Um, so let me grab a pile come back and we can get started. Okay so this is the first color work sweater that I made. This is the ferns and feather pattern from Knit Love Wool. Uh, I've knit this in Drops Alaska. I believe it's like dark turquoise and light gray. Uh, I really enjoyed doing color work and you'll quickly see that this is uh, color work became one of the things that I did most often. Uh, I don't wear this sweater super often, mostly because I don't love how the Alaska feels on my skin. It is 100% wool. Uh, it bloomed a little bit when I wet blocked it, but it's still not like super, super comfortable. So that's why I don't wear it very often. This is the first sweater that I made. This is the brick pattern, which is a free pattern on Ravelry. I used Knit Picks yarn and the color Green Tea Heather. Um, I really like this sort of light, limey green color. There are a lot of mistakes in the sweater. They don't bother me too much. Not enough to go back and try to fix it. Um, the sleeves are a little bit too long. I messed up some on the ribbing along the bottom front, but for the most part, I think it's serviceable and wearable, and I certainly have gotten a few wears out of it. Next up, I have the balloon sweater from Petite Knit. So this is knit in Drops Flora and Drops Kid Silk. The color of the flora is pistachio and the kid silk is sage, I believe. Um, I do like this sort of like marled effect that this gave me. And this was, I think, the first sweater that I had used mohair in. Um, and I really like it. It's nice and soft and fluffy. I do love the sort of like exaggerated balloon sleeves, which of course is the purpose of the balloon sweater pattern. Uh, I don't love the neckline on this. I find the back sits up a little bit too high. I think I, what I want to do is go back and try to re-block it um, so to see if I can get the neck to sit a little bit more comfortably on me. But um, I've worn it a couple of times, but I think because of that neck being an issue, I haven't worn it super often. So this is the first sweater I knit using Malabrigo Rios. Um, this is the colorway Cucumber, I believe. Um, so this is one of their like more total colorways. So one color that sort of like shifts very slightly throughout. Um, I absolutely love this sweater. So I made this in a size large, which I believe in the brick pattern. Um, and it's really, really oversized. I didn't do any waist shaping on this. I did do sort of like a high-low hem with this, sort of adding short rows to like lengthen the back a little bit, which I really, really love. So this is a sweater that gets a lot of use. Next, this is what I'm calling my jawbreaker sweater. So this is knit with Knit Picks Muse yarn in the colorway Italian speckle, I think, something like that. And then drops kid silk in the colorway pistachio ice cream. So it is another one of those soft green colors, which I really, really love. This pattern is the petite knit no frill sweater. Uh, I find that this is too oversized for me. So her patterns tend to be sized with about 10 inches of ease. I feel like that's just too much. I am planning on making the no frill sweater again, but I would do so 
I think maybe an extra small or small size. This is a size medium because I think it's just way too much positive ease for me. But I do really like how this sweater turned out. Um, and this was the first time I'd ever sort of used sort of like a speckled yarn. So I was as excited to see how that came together. So this sweater is the Winter Soul sweater from Knit Love Wool. I finished this just in time for Christmas, so this is what I ended up wearing on Christmas. Um, I've used Iztex Let Lopi yarn in more golden heather and light beige, and I really love how this turned out. Uh, I love all of the color work that's on the bottom hem and the sleeves hems of this, so I think it looks really nice and polished and put together. Um, and so definitely a sweater that's gonna be a lot of wear. This one I absolutely love, I've been wearing a lot. This is the Petite Knit September sweater. So this is my first time trying brioche. Um, I've used Drops Alpaca in dark green and Drops Kid Silk in dark green. So I really love this sweater. I think it's super comfortable. I love how like squishy the brioche knit is. I didn't wet block this one, I just steam blocked it. Um, and even still, it has grown a lot as I'm wearing it. Uh, again, it's a petite knit pattern, so it's really, really oversized. I don't think I'll make another September sweater, but I am looking forward to making a September cardigan in the next year. Um, I found that I was better at brioche worked flat. Once I had to work it in the round, I got a lot. I got confused really easily. So that's one of the reasons why I want to make a brioche cardigan because I think that like it, this is one of those instances where working flat will to be to my advantage. Um, I, I want to make some other cardigans this year, but I am worried about doing the, the pearl rose. So um, yeah, so I do want to make a September cardigan, but I do really, really love this September um, sweater it's been worn a lot uh, i did do try to do some like decorative decreases on the arm um, i got a little bit messed up in terms of what i was supposed to do so it doesn't exactly look like the hack but i think it looks really cool anyway so this is the louisiana sweater from petite knit uh, this one is knit in drops wish i believe which is a super bulky yarn it has a nice big balloon sleeve not necessarily a balloon sleeve but there are no decreases as you're going down so it is um, a straight sleeve that then gets sort of like gathered at the end with your ribbing uh, uh, the only thing that I don't love about this pattern is that I wish it had some short row shaping just to bring the back of the neck up a little bit. Um, but I've tried to sort of like budget with my blocking. Uh, I don't wear this one a whole lot. I don't think that I like bulky yarns, um, but it's something that I had to try first <laughs> before I realized that I didn't like bulky yarns. But it still gets somewhere, so it stayed in my closet. Before I pick up the next pile of sweaters, I thought I would give you a little bit break and look at some socks. So the three pairs of socks that I've knit, the first one is just a plain vanilla sock using the Drops Fable in the colorway Unicorn Party. So this is a self-striping yarn. I had a lot of fun doing this. I felt like with the striping yarn, it was very easy to like be like, oh, I'll just do one more color and then one more color and then one more color. And then before I knew it, the sock was finished. So. Um, I liked using self-striping yarn for that effect, and I think that, that these colors are really nice and pretty and fun. I have a broken seed stitch sock. So this uses broken seed stitch on the top of the foot and then around the ankle, and then for the sole of the foot, it's just striped between the two colors. So I've used black and Emerald City, both in the Drops Fable yarn. And then the last set of socks that I made this year was, uh, the pattern is called Forest Spell from Drops Design. And again, I'm using Drops Nord. So these are not a superwash sock. So I have um, very carefully hand washed them and tried to lay them out flat. And they're still looking pretty good to me. Uh, so this is little, little color work trees along the ankle and the toe portion of the sock. Uh, I think this is called forest green is the color and then I used light beige as the secondary color for the sock so very happy how these turned out so this sweater is called herringbone hill and this was my first attempt at trying to do cabling so hopefully you can sort of see that texture in there it has two rows of cables and then in between each of the cables I have a row of fisherman's rib so this is knit and drops sky in I think it's old pink and then drops kids silk in pearl pink. Um, pink is not my favorite color. 
I don't know why I chose to make a pink sweater, but I really love this yarn combination. It's very light and airy. Uh, Drops Sky is sort of like a chainette style yarn with a lot of alpaca in it. Um, so it's super soft and airy. And I, I do love how squishy and bunny-like this sweater feels. So um, I have worn it a lot, even though pink isn't my favorite color. Um, and I do like the, how effective that sort of like simple line of cabling is just down the center front. So this sweater is one that I designed myself just sort of like borrowing some, some body measurements from other sweaters that I had made, but I, I had written out the yoke or the chart color chart for this from myself using Chartminder. Um, the yarn I've used is Iztex Let Lopi, which again is that Icelandic wool. Uh, for the main uh, body, I've used the color Rust Heather, I believe. Uh, and then for the yoke, I have some fuchsia heather, some teal heather, and some golden or straw heather. I think that's the color. Um, I really, really like how this turned out. When I was knitting with it, it was very rustic and hard on my hands, very drying, uh, but it definitely comes alive with blocking. It becomes really light and airy. Uh, it's still a little bit scratchy, but I've been wearing it next to skin without any issues. And I think as I come more accustomed to wearing knit or wool sweaters, I think it's something that I could wear next to skin. Um, but for now, I've just been throwing like a tank top or a little shirt underneath it. I believe this was the third sweater that I ever made. Um, and this pattern is called White Peacock. It's a free pattern from Drops Design. I just really wanted to try some different techniques. So this one I was considering is sort of like lace work. Uh, I've used Drops Nepal yarn in the color Red Clay. I think this color is really pretty. It's sort of like a dusty muted orange. Um, I think it's pretty. Uh, I was not as successful with this, I think. I think there is a section in the back where the there's like four or five rows that I have shifted over, but now I can't find it for the life of me. <laughs> oh, there it is, yeah. So there's a section right here where, where the rows sort of got shifted over and the design got a little bit messed up, um, but I still have worn it quite a lot. I think, again, this is the Nepal is an Aran weight yarn, and I've just decided that I don't like big bulky yarns. My preference is to knit with like a DK or, you know, a fingering with a mohair. So, I mean, it's something that I didn't know because I just started knitting this year, but I needed to try all these things to figure it out first. Um, but yeah, moving forward, I don't think I'd ever knit with anything larger than a worsted weight. So this is another Knit Love wool pattern. This one is called Silver Lining and I've actually made this sweater twice this year. Uh, so for this is the first one that I made and I used Drops Lima in the color Goldenrod. Um, that's this main sort of like mustard yellow. And then again, I held it with Drops Kid Silk in the color Curry and then just off-white Lima and Kid Silk in the color work section. So it's a little bit oversized on me because uh, I really should have made it with just Lima and then I decided to add the mohair to it. And so I ended up, when I did my gauge swatch, I had done it with just the Lima by itself. And I was thinking that I could get away with adding mohair without it changing the gauge too much, but it, it definitely sort of plumped it up a little. Uh, so it's, it's big on me. But you know, there are often times where you want to wear a nice, big, fluffy, oversized sweater. Speaking of fluffy, oversized sweater, this one is, I believe the pattern is called Market Muse, and this is a free pattern from Drops. Um, I'm, I've used Drops Melody in the colorway Curry. Uh, it's, a, again, a gigantic, fluffy sweater. It has these really nice, big balloon sleeves. It's really light. I think this whole sweater is like 200 grams or something like that. Uh, the Melody is a so a pack of based yarn, but it's like, it's not plied or anything. It's just really, really fluffy. So it like fills in the holes, even though you're using quite a large needle. I want to say this was knit on like a US eight or nine, something like that. Um, and I, when I was making it, I originally thought like it was going to be see-through, but I haven't had any issues at all wearing this. And typically I wear it with a, uh, a golden curry colored bodysuit underneath it. Okay. So the next one I have is, um, uh, 
Oh, I don't even remember the name of this pattern. I think it's called Willis Fair Isle. Um, I'll, of course, try to link it in the description box. Um, so this one is knit in Drops Extra Fine Merino, uh, which is a super wash wool in the color gray and I think the color dark turquoise. I had originally purchased yellow to go uh, with the color work on this, but I felt like the yellow wasn't high enough of a contrast. So I switched out for blue at the last minute because I only needed one ball. Um, so this sweater, I was unprepared. This is the first time I had used Superwash and I was unprepared for how much it was going to grow. So again, it is, it is huge. Uh, I also forgot to switch to a smaller needle in the color work section. So I have a feeling that this is a sweater that I will probably frog in the future and try to recoup some of this yarn, at least recoup the gray yarn. I probably won't bother trying to keep the turquoise. Um, but I have worn it a lot because it's soft and easy and it's something that I can just throw in the wash. It's, it's easy to maintain, but it doesn't fit very great and um, it's just big. <laughs> So this is a sweater that I was originally planning to make for Christmas, but I ended up finishing it much sooner. Um, and this is the Holly sweater. I can't remember the designer. Uh, I've knit this in Drops Air and Drops Kids Silk. It's really nice and fluffy. Uh, there's a lovely soft halo on this. I feel like a little bunny, ski bunny when I'm wearing it. I really love the color work design on this. She also had intended for you to put sort of like French knot red berries, holly berries on it, but I left the berries off just because I wanted something that has a little bit more versatile and I could wear even when it wasn't the Christmas season. So the next sweater is the Trista pattern. I believe this was my second color work. Uh, again, this pattern is from Knit Love Wool. And I had scoured Ravelry and I found somebody that had done this colorway and I absolutely loved it. So I figured I bought all Drops Lima to sort of like approximate that. So I think this is like light gray. We've got petrol blue, jeans blue, and olive mix. All of these in the Drops Lima, uh, which is an alpaca wool blend yarn. I really liked how this sweater had the uh, details on the cuff. And so that's something that I carried forward into a lot of my other sweaters that, that you've already seen. Um, so this one is super, super soft. I love how this yarn blocks up and it gets just a lot more plump and fuzzy and soft. Alpaca is, I think, my favorite fiber to work with. So things that I've learned along the way, I love alpaca, I love you know, DK size yarns. Um, so I've, I've learned a lot as I've made stuff this year and I've definitely had some mistakes, um, not mistakes, some learning experiences, some growth opportunities. Um, so yeah, definitely nothing is a failure. It's just something to learn from. So this sweater is knit in drops. No. So this sweater is knit in Malabrigo Rios in the colorway Siri. Uh, it's a gray background with lots of orange and brown sort of like speckles on it. I do need to go back and sort of frog back the bottom four inches of the sweater and switch it out. I have a little bit of extra yarn just because I hate the way that you see that color block change in the bottom. <clears throat> I do have enough yarn left over to fix that, but it's, it's kind of unfortunate and they don't love this color so much so it's not it's it's on my pile of things to fix but of course when you're a maker all you really want to do is move on to the next fun new thing so there's that this was a free pattern i believe it's called summer tweed v-neck um it's supposed to have just like a rolled neck, but I ended up going ahead and putting some ribbing in there into the V-neck using a Cocoa Knits tutorial. And I really liked how that turned out. So I would definitely do a one by one ribbed V-neck again in the future. So this is uh, the sweater that I intended to make for Halloween, but I didn't get it finished in time using Drops Soft Tweed in the colorways Peppercorn and Carrot Cake. Uh, the pattern is called Goink, Goink, something like that. It's supposed to be inspired by Ginkgo Biloba leaves. I really adored the colorwork design on this. It was a free pattern. Uh, I do find that the proportions on this aren't great for me. I added a bunch of extra stitches to my sleeves and I like how they fit, but with the extra stitches, uh, I find the body of the sweater to be a little bit wide. I wish it was a little bit more narrow. I think, I think I have some 
not body dysmorphia, but like I am unrealistic about how big I am. And so I always end up making my sweaters too large. Uh, so that's another thing that I want to like focus on moving forward is sort of like sizing down in my patterns a little bit so I get a little bit more tailored fitted fit. Uh, I tried to do that with this sweater and it's, it's mostly successful. <laughs> So before I move on to the last two piles, I thought I'd give you another sweater break and we can look at my two stuffed animals. So the first one I have made is Butterball. He is a Siamese cat. I call him Butterball because he looks like a turkey to me. He is so fat. Um, I This was the first time I had made any like three-dimensional sculpture things like this. So it was a learning experience. <laughs> There's something wrong with his arms. You can see they just, he's always in a perfect fir first position, um, ready to go. But I, I mean, I like them. He's, he's fat <laughs> and he was sitting in my chair a lot this month. And every time I look over, I would get a little like startled because I thought it was my cat sitting in the chair, um, a cat who died several years ago. And so it was, it was sort of surreal. So I, I've moved him around a little bit. So he startles me a little bit less. And the other animal that I made this year is uh, this little frog. So both of these patterns are from Claire Garland or Dot Pebbles on Instagram. She has loads of fun little animals. I think the frog was super successful. I love his little, his little fingers and toes. Um, I love his belly. So this one is knit with just leftover yarn that I had. Um, drops soft tweed, I think in guacamole and beige or wheat or something like that um and then so the for his back is guacamole soft tweed and then i held it with uh drops kid silk in curry and i love how it gives him this sort of like yellowy ochre color uh, so he's going to get a sweater this year but i've decided that i want to make more of these sort of like smaller animals because they bring me a lot of joy and i like see them sitting on my desk so coming up i'm planning on making a uh, little big penguin a little teeny tiny bunny um and maybe a duckling and he needs a sweater of course Okay, just two more piles of sweaters to go. The next one is the Anchor Summer Tee from Petite Knits. That's the pattern. And I knit this in drops baby merino. I can't remember the color on it. Um, but it does have this like ribbing, one by one ribbing yoke that was really, really interesting that I wanted to try. This is the only t-shirt that I've made this year. I definitely wanna make some more t-shirts next year, some t-shirts and maybe some tank tops, something that will allow me to wear my knitted items throughout the whole year. Because obviously, even though I live in Colorado, um, it's not sweater weather year round. So I wanna have some options that I can wear my knitwear in the warmer months. So, so far this is all I have, but I am planning on making some more. Again, this got a little oversized when I blocked it. Uh, the ribbing has grown a lot with wear. So I, I'm hoping I can block it again and maybe sort of shrink it up. It is a superwash wool, so I might throw it into the dryer to see if I can get it to tighten up a little. Um, the the superwash wool from drops all has like an s ply to it so i don't love how that knits up so it ends up knitting with like the straight line and then the diagonal lines but um it does mean that it's super wearable so the next sweater is another knit love wool you'll see that i have a lot of her color work patterns because i just was in love with them uh, this one is called goldwing uh, and it uses drop, no, I've, on the top of it, I've used Malabrica Rios in the color Teal Feather. And then for the main body, it's Drops Lima in the color like taupe beige, I believe, or taupe gray. And uh, this was a colorway that I had seen someone knit up in this pattern that I absolutely loved and I had to have it myself. I'm really happy how this turned out. And this one, of course, has the nice design details along the sleeve end as well. I did make the sleeves slightly too long on this, but I've been getting away with wearing it. Um, it's finished with just, a, I think it's a three, three stitch I cord along the end. If I had to do this over again, I would make the sleeve sort of shorter and then I would just finish the end off with ribbing in the teal feather color because I do have an awful lot of that left over. But I have worn this a lot just because I think the colors are gorgeous and I really like the design, how it sort of like flip flops and crosses those two colors. 
So this pattern is a free pattern on the Drops website called Sheep Happens, I believe. Um, and it's just this really cute, adorable sheep sweater. And I've used Drops Puna for the sheep themselves and the main body, which is 100% alpaca. Again, I love alpaca. It's so soft and fluffy. Uh, I want to use more alpaca next year. And then the top, I think, is Drops Lima in the colorway blush. I did have the blush run a little bit when I wet blocked it, but it doesn't appear to have dyed my sheep pink at all. Um, so I, I like this sweater. I haven't worn it too much just because I find the sheep are a little bit tight right around my shoulders. The rest of the feather, sweater fits fine, but I think it's because it's that stranded color work. It is just ever so slightly too tight on my shoulders. So it, it limits mobility of doing a lot of stuff with my arms. Um, but I have worn this some. I kind of wish that I had done one of the sheep as like a little black sheep, but I didn't. <laughs> Next, I have the Sunday Sweater Fry Petite Knit. Uh, this one is done with Drops Air in dark brown and Drops Kids Silk in light beige. So this is sort of like, I just saw everybody making this sweater. Like everybody had one Sunday sweater. So I felt like I had to do it. I didn't particularly love knitting this because um, I, I find the, the section where my knits move over to my pearls, that last row of knits always gets a little bit wonky. Uh, it is a really soft sweater. I've worn it a ton since I made it. So this is one where I didn't enjoy the process, but I enjoyed the finish object. Uh, and the process didn't destroy my enjoyment of the finished object, if that makes sense. Um, so I have worn it quite a lot. It's really warm, really fuzzy. I like these big bunny sweaters. Um, and I sort of like this, this muted brown. Again, these aren't colors that I would have necessarily picked, but I saw someone who made it with these exact yarns and I was like, yep, I've got to do that one. Uh, so this next one is a, another Louisiana sweater. I had shown one previously that I had done in Drops Wish, but this one I had done with two strands of Drops Melody, which is a sort of like fluffy alpaca blown sort of style yarn. And I love this one a lot better. I did change up the, the raglan on this one. I used yarn over increases to get this sort of like eyelet effect on the raglan stitches. And I think that's really, really pretty. I love this one a lot more than I love my green one. Um, it's really soft. I love the yarn. I love that little lacy detail on the raglan stitches. So I'm glad that I made a second one out of it and I think it was worth doing. <laughs> So this is my second silver lining sweater that I made this year. This one is using Malabrigo Rios in the colorways Ivory and Volcan. So this is my crunchy leaf sweater. You can't really tell, but Volcan is a multi-dimensional um, sort of warm toned yarn with lots of oranges and browns and reds in it. So it sort of looks like falling leaves, but I think it's really, really effective in this sweater because it's such a high contrast with the base color. Uh, the Ivory, Yarn is one of those more like tonal style, style yarn. So you still have some like dimension um, and texture, not texture, but like color dimension in the bottom of it, but it's a little bit more uh, flat. And I think when you look up closer, you can see all the intricate different colors on the color work on this one. So I, I really like that. I've worn this one a ton since I finished it. I love how it fits. I just love everything about it. So this one is the Piper sweater. Uh, it's just a free pattern, but you had to like read the pattern online in order to get it for free. If you wanted it printed, then it was gonna cost money. Uh, and it's using some Lions brand yarn, I believe in Cotton Comfy was the name of the yarn. So I've used two colorways, the whipped cream and the chai. The chai is sort of like the, the splotchy one. Uh, so this is knit was knit flat. This is the only sweater I think that I've knit flat so far. Uh, and it's, it's not full garter. It's like alternates between garter and stockinette. Um, but I do like how it turned out. It, it's a not, it's, it's a cotton poly blend. So I don't love the fiber so much on it, even though like, yeah, I can throw it in the washing machine and stuff like that, but I don't wear it as much because I think that I just really prefer uh, natural fibers like wool and alpaca moving forward. So it's something that I like might want to keep in my car for when I get cold, but it's not something that I'm overly precious about. And 
the last sweater that I have to share with you. This one is the Athena pattern from Knit Love Wool. This one is Knit in Drops Soft Tweed. I think that the main color on this that I've used is Marzipan, and then we have Guacamole and Grizzly Bear up at the very top. I really like how this one looks. I think that the design is super effective, how it like gradates down from the darker color into the different colors. Um, and it's one that I wear super frequently. I like the tweed style yarn. I like how it gives a lot of texture to things without me having to stitch the texture in. Um, so so you'll, I use them a lot this year. So key takeaway points from everything that I've knitted uh, that I've, I've mentioned throughout is that A, I like some thinner style yarns. I like fingering, DK, maybe worsted. Uh, moving forward, I wanna try some more textured patterns. I wanna try some lace, some cabling. I wanna do some cardigans next year. Um, there's definitely gonna be some more animals in my future, though I'm gonna focus on, you know, like little smaller animals and not, not the big, big fluffy boys like this. Uh, and then I want to try to do some more socks this year. I didn't necessarily love doing the broken seed stitch, but I would like to do some socks that have like maybe a cabling detail, maybe a little bit of lace, not something that is an all over design, but just like one that's like running down the ankle uh, might be something I want to try. So I've learned a lot from my first year of knitting. I think I've been pretty prolific if I do say so myself. Uh, and I'm excited to have all of these sweaters in my wardrobe, but I'm also excited to, for what's in the future. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you stayed around this long, congratulations, and I'll see everyone next time. Take care. Mm -hmm.